All right, everyone, welcome back to the land of Kim. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, before we get started on today's episode, I got a little bit of a teaser for you guys. So I am currently in the writing and research process for the second book in the series here on the land of Kim. And I just stumbled across a revelation in my research that has completely revitalized me and further encouraged that I am on the right track with this theory and this project. I am super excited. And if you think what I have presented thus far here on the land of chem is interesting and compelling, well, stay tuned. This is just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> so with that being said, today's episode, this is episode 17, the land of chem 2021 research expedition recap part four, covering the bent pyramid of Dashur. Now, this is by far one of the most mysterious pyramids in Egypt, mostly because this structure was officially closed to the public until 2019. So over the past couple of years, I got a chance to go inside this structure in 2020 and again here in 2021. And in today's episode, I'm going to be presenting some exclusive photos and videos from our expedition into the Bent Pyramid. Hopefully this will be a lot of stuff that you haven't seen about this structure before. I think that is it for the intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. And just a quick reminder to definitely check out my most recent interview on the How to Kill a Sacred Cow podcast. Jay, thank you so much for having me on the show. It was an absolutely awesome time, brother. And as with all of these interviews, Jay ended up asking a whole bunch of questions and we ended up discussing a whole lot of things that I haven't presented here on the channel yet. So I highly recommend checking out the show. I will leave a link in the video description below. Again, that's the How to Kill a Sacred Cow podcast. Jay, thank you so much for having me on the show and I look forward to doing it again soon. Thanks, brother. All right, everyone, here we go with our exploration of the Bent Pyramid of Dashur. So this is just a picture of the exterior of the structure, so you can see how absolutely immense this structure truly is. It is really mind-blowing to see the Bent Pyramid in person. So you can see here that there are two openings to the internal components of this structure. So here on the northern side of the pyramid, this is the opening to the northern pump shaft, and then here all the way up on the western side of the pyramid is the opening to the western pump shaft and you can see how high this opening is off the ground now i discussed both of these pump shaft openings in my previous episode titled the fallacies of the pharaonic burial theory and i highly recommend you checking that out here on the land of chem youtube channel because it's absolutely ludicrous to imply that there was a huge scaffolding built here on the outside of the structure to then slide your pharaonic body down into this tiny pump shaft to then be interred inside of the structure. So in today's episode, we're going to take a quick tour around the exterior of the Bent Pyramid so you can see some very interesting details about the masonry and construction of the structure. We are then going to take a journey into the Satellite Pyramid, which is located here on the south side of the structure. And then finally, we're going to take a journey into the internal chambers of the Bent Pyramid. And then I will present a quick review of the chemical operations that have been occurring to get us up to this point, starting with the Step Pyramid of Saqqara, moving to the Red Pyramid, and then finally here in the Bent Pyramid of Dashur. So before we proceed with the rest of the video, let's just do a quick review of the configuration of this structure. So here at number five, you can see the Nile River Valley Inlet Temple. So these temples were designed to bring water from the inundated Nile River, and it was conducted through the causeway to fill the reservoir surrounding the main structure. So we he see here the reservoir surrounding the Bent Pyramid, and you will note that the reservoir also surrounds the satellite pyramid here on the south side. So this entire reservoir was filled with water, as was the portion that surrounds the satellite pyramid here on the south side. So before we discuss the satellite pyramid, let's just do a quick review of the internal components of the bent pyramid. You have here your northern pump shaft leading into the lower chambers. And here is your western pump shaft leading into the primary reaction chamber. So this large chamber here in the center of the structure is your primary reaction chamber. And these lower chambers are your lower separation chambers. It's actually a two-part chamber. There's an upper separation chamber and a lower separation chamber. We're going to be discussing those in detail here in just a moment. But today's video, we're going to start with the satellite pyramid here on the south side. So one thing to note. Just check out the configuration and the alignment of the components of the satellite pyramid. And you can see those here inside of the structure. And you will notice that these components are aligned directly 
with the configuration of the valve housing of the stone valve that is located here in the western pump shaft. So just keep that in mind that the, the components of the satellite pyramid are aligned directly with the valve housings for the movable stone valve here in the western pump shaft. And we'll be discussing that here in just a moment. All right, so this is just a picture of what remains of the satellite pyramid on the south side of the bent pyramid. And you can see how big this structure would have been in its original condition. And this is a little guard shack out front of the structure. And this is about seven feet tall. So again, you can kind of get an idea of how big this satellite pyramid truly is. Now, this is a diagram of the internal components of this satellite pyramid. And for those of you that are not familiar with my work, I do believe that this satellite pyramid operated like an hydraulic press, which was responsible for the movement of those two stone valve inside the western pump shaft of the bent pyramid. And I'm going to be doing a video discussing the operation of this structure specifically here in the near future. But I wanted to point out some very, very unusual details about this structure that we discovered in our most recent research expedition. So I'm going to be showing a couple of pictures from a few different areas inside of this structure. So the first set of pictures are from here. And we discovered a very unusual deposit of what I'm going to call halite, and that's just a fancy term for rock salt. Um, you would have to take samples of this material to get chemical composition analysis to determine exactly what it is, but it is a salty halite type material, and there is a large deposit. You can see this thick deposit of this halite salt completely covering about a three foot section in the lower shaft of this structure. So very, very unusual. I don't necessarily have an explanation for this as it's not related to the, the function of the structure or applicable to my theory. I just wanted to point out some of the anomalous details about the structure because there are tons of them here in the bent pyramid of Dashur. So again, very unusual deposit of halite and it only covers about a three to four foot section in this shaft. And here's a couple of close close up pictures so you can see exactly what that deposit of that halite salt looks like. All right, so those previous pictures were showing the deposit of halite salt that is located here in about a three to four foot section portion of this shaft. The next couple of pictures will be taken from inside of this central chamber inside of the satellite pyramid. So there's a couple of things to note about this portion of the structure. So anytime you see this configuration here with the vaulted tiered upper vault, this immediately makes me think of manipulation of pressure. And anyone that's familiar with the operation of a hydraulic press will know that these things work because there is an inverse relationship between the size of your primary piston shaft and a secondary piston shaft. So you will see that there is an unexcavated shaft system located here leading out of the bottom of this central chamber. And I believe, and I will show some evidence to prove, that this shaft system actually leads back into the main pyramid and is connected with the valve system in the western pump shaft inside of the main structure. And I'll be showing some photos and some videos of that here in just a moment. All right, so this is a picture showing that unexcavated shaft that leads down out of the bottom of the central chamber inside of the satellite pyramid. Again, this shaft system is completely filled with sand and dirt. So again, you would have to completely excavate this to prove or disprove if it is connected to the main structure. But I'll show a very interesting video here in just a moment that indicates that there is absolutely a connection between the components of the satellite pyramid and the components inside of the main structure. And here are just a couple of quick pictures showing the configuration of the upper vault inside of this satellite pyramid. And I'm going to insert a video showing the components of the structure and its connection to the main pyramid here in just a moment. All right, here we are looking at the satellite pyramid of the bent pyramid. And I'm going to turn back around so you can see the corresponding area on the south side of the main structure. And you can see here that there was an attempt to excavate into this side of the pyramid. Somebody thought it was important enough to look in this particular area. And I happen to agree because I believe that there is a connection between the portcullis valve system in the bent pyramid, main pyramid, and the satellite pyramid. And that's pretty apparent when you look at the area of the excavated tunnel and turning around here looking directly at the entrance or opening to the satellite pyramid 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, here's just a couple of quick pictures showing the outside of the Bent Pyramid, and there are a few spaces on this structure where the original casing stones are still intact, and it is unbelievably impressive to see how razor sharp the edges on this pyramid still are. So this picture is taken from the northeast corner, and looking up at the remaining edge of this casing stone is absolutely mind-blowing. It has only been you know, according to the conventional timeline, approximately 5,000 years since this structure was built, and this casing stone edge is razor sharp. It is absolutely amazing, and I just wanted to show you guys this because, again, it's, it's really a testament to the knowledge and the ingenuity of these builders that this thing is still intact. It's, it's really amazing. So the next couple of pictures are going to be showing some of the internal masonry used in the structure itself. So this picture is taken from the north side of the structure, and this is the scaffold that is currently used to access the opening to the northern pump shaft. And the next couple of images, I'm going to show something very, very unusual about the construction techniques utilized in building these pyramids. So you will see here but that there is a crack that contains a halite deposit in this stone. And we noticed that this crack and deposit of halite continues from one stone in the sequence to the next stone in the sequence to the next stone in the sequence. And we find this in many other sites in Egypt where the pattern of the geological strata continues from one block to the next block to the next block in the sequence. So what does this mean? Well, we know that the ancient stone masons that built these structures used to cut the stones from the quarry and number them in order. Those stones were then brought from the quarry to the construction site and placed back in the exact same order that they were excavated from the quarry. Those stones were also numbered and those numbers also had a predetermined order inside of the construction itself. There was absolutely nothing arbitrary, random, or haphazard about the construction of these pyramids. So what, again, does this mean? That they were extracting the stones in order and then placing them back in the exact same order inside of the structure. Well, to me, this is an indication that they were attempting to replicate the geological signature that was located in the quarry itself. And I'm gonna show a very interesting video of this section here in just a moment. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and we are looking here at a series of stones on the north side of the Bent Pyramid. And we'll start here. So you see this crack is actually a natural deposit of halite inside of the stone. And this is one stone. This is a separate stone here. This is another separate stone here. Going around. This is a completely different block. And moving here to this block, you can see that deposit continues, 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 continues. So now this is an indication that these stones were excavated from a quarry in this series and then placed here back exactly in the same place that they were found in the natural location from which they were excavated from the quarry. I won't say why I think they did that, but pretty interesting to note that they tried to replicate the geology of the quarry from which these stones were excavated. All right, so now that we have done a review of the exterior of the structure and a quick journey inside of the satellite pyramid here on the south side, let's just do a quick review of the internal components of the structure and then we will take a journey inside of the bent pyramid. So here again on the northern side of the structure, you have your northern pump shaft. Now this descends into your lower separation chamber. So you have your upper separation chamber here and your lower separation chamber here. Now, starting from the western side of the structure, you have your western pump shaft, and I'm going to show a picture here in just a little bit of how high this thing is up off the ground. So now, this western pump shaft 
leads down into the structure. This is the configuration for your stone valve housing here, and this is your primary reaction chamber here in the center of the structure. All right, so these photos are just showing the northern pump shaft that descends into the internal chambers. Now, there have been many requests for documentation to show these pump shafts and any indications of whether or not there was a stone block or some sort of pump mechanism moving up and down these pump shafts. Well, I can show you here that all of these pump shafts are in a partially destroyed very, very deteriorated condition. So it's very difficult to say whether the deterioration or the destruction inside of the pump shaft is an indication of the function or whether this happened later. But nonetheless, there is plenty of destroyed areas inside of these pump shafts. And actually, the further you get down into the northern pump shaft of the Bent Pyramid, the lowest quarter of this pump shaft is completely eroded and it is almost rounded out to where it's no longer a square shaft, but it's a completely rounded out shaft at the very bottom. And you'll see that in the video I'm gonna insert here in just a moment as we explore the interior components of the Bent Pyramid. All right, so this is a diagram of the configuration of the lower separation chambers. You're gonna see this in a video here in just a moment, but this will just help to orient you inside of the structure. So when you go inside of the Bent Pyramid, the northern pump shaft, takes you down into this northern entrance that is indicated here. You will arrive into the lower separation chamber, and this chamber is incredibly eroded and deteriorated. Now, there is a modern wooden scaffold or staircase that takes you up this lower separation chamber into your upper separation chamber. Now, inside of this upper separation chamber today, there is another wooden scaffold or staircase here that leads you up into the connecting passage that will bring you into the primary reaction chamber. We're gonna take a journey through all of these here in just a moment. All right, so in this photo, you can see the wooden staircase that is leading up into the upper separation chamber. And you can see here in the upper section of this picture, this is the eroded and deteriorated area of the upper vault of the lower separation chamber. And I'm gonna show a couple close-up pictures so you can see how deteriorated the inside of this chamber truly is. And here you go, is the erosion and deterioration of this vaulted section of this chamber. Now remember, the tiered vault inside of this chamber used to be as pristine and as squared as the vault inside of the Red Pyramid. And I'm gonna show some diagrams that show the original configuration of this chamber. So what actually caused the erosion and deterioration inside of these separation chambers? Well, I've discussed that before, and I believe that it's an indication of the chemical reactions that were occurring in this lower separation chamber. All right, and the next series of images will just give you some orientation around the upper separation chamber, because if you're not familiar with the components of this structure or its organization, it can be very difficult to determine what you're actually looking at. So this here is the northern face of the structure, and this is the opening of that upper vault that I showed in the previous pictures. This is the eastern side of the chamber, and you can see here looking into the upper vault of the upper separation chamber. This next photo is again showing the northern wall of the chamber, looking all the way up into the upper vault, and this is the opening of that lower separation chamber here. The next picture, this is the southern wall of the chamber, and you're gonna be looking at some components of the chimney here, which I'm gonna discuss that here in an exclusive video that I'll put in here in just a moment. And again, this is the wooden scaffold and staircase that you take up to that connecting passage, which will deliver you into the primary reaction chamber. Now, in these two images, you can see some unusual deposits that are found on the walls inside the upper separation chamber. So here in this left image, this is another deposit or section of the chamber that is covered with the deposit of that halite salt. And you can see a line here, very clearly delineated. On the left side of that, this area is completely covered with that deposit of the halite salt. This area here on the right is just regular old limestone. Now here on the right side, you can see these big blobs of pink mortar. Now this pink mortar has been dated to the dynastic Egyptian period, and you see this in all sorts of structures across Egypt. Now this is not an indication that the dynastic Egyptians were actually building these structures, but is an indication that they were renovating and updating these structures during that time period. Now, here is an awesome picture as you begin to ascend the staircase leading to the connecting passage of that upper vault 
of the lower separation chamber. Very, very cool image and some very unusual configurations indeed inside of this structure. Now this picture just shows the uppermost vault of the upper separation chamber. And you can notice here that there's no dark deposits inside this upper upper uh, vault, which again, we discussed that regarding the operation of the red pyramid and the staining in the upper vault of that chamber. Again, if you were to imply that the staining in the upper vault of the red pyramid came from soot from the torches, where is all the soot inside of this chamber? There is absolutely none. There is no staining inside of this upper vault whatsoever. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are down inside the Bet Pyramid of Dashur, and just made it down the northern pump shaft. And we're gonna turn around here, and looking at your lower separation chamber. And you can see the extreme deterioration of the inside of this portion of the structure. The erosion of the blocks in this area and I provided an explanation for exactly why that erosion could have been occurring in my video on the function of the bent pyramid and let me do my best here to get this video climbing into the upper separation chamber all right, Whew. it is no small task <laughs> getting inside here. This is one of my favorite structures in Egypt. And looking up towards the vault of the upper separation chamber this is a blocked off portion of the chamber referred to as the chimney and yes that was a bat flying by me <laughs> And stay tuned for more. It is uh, again quite a quite a lot of work to get up this next staircase and into the primary reaction chamber. But at least you can get a sense of what it's like in here. This pyramid is newly open to the public. So This is my second opportunity to get inside of here, but first opportunity to do some real documentation of the structure. All right, so we have now ascended the wooden staircase in this upper separation chamber, and we're gonna take a journey through this connecting passage that will bring us up to the primary reaction chamber. Now, when I started to research the bent pyramid, I was unsure as to whether or not this connecting passage was an original part of the structure, because it has some very, very unusual construction and configuration details. But after many years of research and being inside of this structure in 2020 and 2021, I have come to the conclusion that this connecting passage is indeed an original part of the structure and it is an integral part in the pyramid's operation. So I'm going to show some pictures from that section here in just a moment. Now, I do believe that this connecting passage is actually a portion of natural bedrock and there was a pre-existing tunnel in this section of bedrock and they utilized that natural tunnel to construct this actual connecting passage between these two chamber systems. And there's a couple of reasons why I believe that to be the case, which I will show here in just a moment. So this is the opening leading into that connecting passage from the upper vault of your upper separation chamber. And you can see that this is clearly stone masonry blocks, man-made blocks leading into this tunnel. So here in the next picture, you take a couple of steps into the connecting passage and you're winding your way up into through this passage system. Now you will see the further we get into the passage system, it now becomes a section of natural bedrock. And I do believe that this to be a pre-existing tunnel through this section of bedrock 
that they utilize to construct this connecting passage. So the end portions of each section of the tunnel, those are actually stone masonry, man-made masonry blocks. And then this middle section of the tunnel appears to me to be a portion of a natural tunnel leading through the bedrock. So we've gone through that middle section and we are going through the upper section of the connecting passage here into the western shaft system that goes horizontally here to the right and left at the end of the passage. Now you will notice that there is some very unusual erosion at the bottom of the passageway here and I'm going to show that when we take the trip in the opposite direction going back down into the uh, upper separation chamber. All right, now this image is showing the western pump shaft that leads into your primary reaction chamber. And I'm going to show a couple of pictures of the stone valves that are located in this western pump shaft and another image from the Acida project that shows you how high up off the ground that western pump shaft really is. And this diagram just shows the configuration of this stone valve housing here that is located in the western pump shaft of the bent pyramid. And I'm going to be doing a video discussing the, again, the function of the satellite pyramid, its connection to this valve housing, and the function of these two components in a later video. But I just wanted to present the configuration of this valve housing so you can be familiar with exactly how this thing looks. Now, in the next couple of images, these are some pictures showing that stone valve system. So this is a picture of the westernmost stone valve inside of the western pump shaft. Now, this picture here on the left was taken from my 2021 research expedition, and you can see here that they have installed some brand new wooden floors and a gate covering up this western stone valve. Now, here on the right, this image was taken from the Acida Project website. They actually got a chance to go inside the Bent Pyramid in 2012 with Yusuf, and there was none of this upgraded wooden stuff inside of the structure. Now you can see here that there is a large piece of this stone valve that has been removed. Now this was actually originally covering up this whole section, but they cut this section out so that people could go in and explore the western pump shaft. And that is exactly what the researchers from the Acida Project did in 2012. They climbed over this little section into the western pump shaft, and one of these dudes took a little journey. So again, this is that western valve right here. This guy climbed all the way up this western pump shaft and stuck his head out right here to take this miraculous picture. Now, you can see how high this western pump shaft is off the ground. And again, I discussed this in my previous episode about the fallacies of the pharaonic burial theory and how absolutely ridiculous it is that you are bringing a body all the way up this high to then slide him down to be interred into the internal chambers. But really, really awesome expedition by the Acida Project in 2012. Again, they got a chance to go inside the structure way before it was ever reopened to the public. And of course, when they are reopening these structures to the public, they clean them, they sanitize them, not in terms of disinfection, but in terms of removing any indications of the original function of this structure. So very, very awesome picture. And again, kudos to the Acida Project for climbing all the way up into this Western pump shaft. It's really pretty cool. All right, these next couple of pictures are from the Acida Project website, again, showing that valve housing. This is the easternmost stone valve leading into your primary reaction chamber. And this image actually is from my 2021 research expedition showing the vault of that valve housing. Again, this is the easternmost stone valve inside of the western pump shaft. So again, what we're looking at here, this is your westernmost stone valve. And this is the easternmost stone valve, the one I just showed. And this is the shaft leading into your primary reaction chamber. So there's a couple of things that I'm going to discuss now regarding the primary reaction chamber of the Bent Pyramid. So the first and foremost is this platform and scaffolding system inside of the chamber. All right, this is by far the most interesting diagram that I have found regarding the primary reaction chamber of the bent pyramid. So you can see here on the left, this is the original configuration of the chamber. And here on the right, this is the current eroded state of the inside of the chamber. Now there's a couple of things to point out on these diagrams. First and foremost, the platform inside of this chamber is not an original part of this construction. So you can see here on the left, that this chamber was originally very similar to the tiered vault of the red pyramid. Now, these wooden stone beams that have been inserted here are absolutely not an original part of this construction. These have been dated. These are Lebanese cedar beams that have been dated to the dynastic Egyptian period. And these are very clearly and very crudely mortared in place 
into this chamber and have absolutely no function whatsoever in supporting the stability of this chamber. These wooden beams were put in place when the dynastic Egyptians were constructing this platform inside of the chamber. And I have some evidence to show that here in just a moment. The second thing I want to point out is the deterioration of the chamber. Look at how pristine and squared the tiers of this vault are inside of this chamber. Now, the implication is that when the dynastic Egyptians were constructing this platform, they went in and smoothed out the inside of this chamber in an attempt to expand it and enlarge it to fit in this platform. That is absolute nonsense. And when you go inside of this chamber, you can very clearly see that the deterioration and erosion inside this chamber is not something that was done intentionally. It has absolutely nothing to do with the construction of this platform. It has everything to do with the chemical operations that were occurring inside of this chamber. So let's show some images of all this here in just a moment. All right, so as you enter the primary reaction chamber of the Bent Pyramid, here on the left is the megalithic original masonry of the chamber itself. Here on the right, are tiny stone blocks that have been inserted into the chamber in the construction of the platform by the dynastic Egyptians. This here does not compare whatsoever to the quality of the masonry here. This came from a completely different area than this. They are not the same whatsoever. Now, looking into the bottom of the primary reaction chamber, you can see these wooden Lebanese cedar beams that have been stuck here into this chamber. I have been inside this structure twice, and I can conclusively say that these beams have absolutely no support whatsoever for this chamber. They are not a part of the architecture. They are not a part of the original construction. You could take these beams out and this chamber will be absolutely fine. You can see the large blobs of that pink mortar that have been used to crudely stick these things in place, and these wooden beams were put in place to build the platform inside of this structure. They are not a part of the original chamber and they have absolutely no, no relevance to the stability or the construction of the chamber themselves. These wooden beams were made to support the platform that was built inside this chamber by the dynastic Egyptians. Here's a couple more pictures just showing the insertions of those wooden beams. Again, this wooden beam does not go all the way into the structure. It's just stuck here into a hole inside the wall. And again, you can see that crude pink mortar that has been utilized to fix these beams in place. Now, I'm going to put a video here in just a moment that shows the internal configurations of this primary reaction chamber and the very clear evidence that the platform inside of the chamber came along later by the dynastic Egyptians. So this image is just showing the upper vault of this primary reaction chamber, and it is absolute nonsense to imply that this erosion inside of the chamber was intentional in building the platform or improving the structure for a pharaonic burial. This is erosion that was occurring due to chemical reactions. And you can see another one of these wooden beams that was stuck up in the upper vault by the dynastic Egyptians. Again, this has absolutely no architectural significance. It is not to support the chamber. It was not used in the construction of the chamber. This was stuck in much, much later by the dynastic Egyptians when they came in and renovated this structure. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are inside the primary reaction chamber of the Bent Pyramid. So we're looking back here towards the western shaft, and I wanted to point out a few features in here. All right, so to the right, you can see the clear separation between this part of the structure, which was original, and these smaller stone blocks here which was restoration by the dynastic Egyptians and the building of this entire platform inside of this primary reaction chamber is not a part of the original structure. And I've shown the configuration of the original chamber in previous posts on Instagram that showed what the empty chamber would have looked like without this platform. Because again, this, this was an empty chamber originally and as we walk up the staircase here, you can notice the significant deterioration and erosion to the stone inside the structure. It looks rounded almost. And I will try to continue to film as best I can as I carefully climb this staircase. 
And again, looking here at these small stone blocks that compose the wall and platform in the middle of the chamber. Looking back here and up into the vault of the primary reaction chamber. And even last year when we were here, there were tons of bats inside of this structure. Not so many now. But again, the most, I think the most important thing to note inside this chamber is the erosion. And I think that was an indication of the chemical reactions that were occurring inside of this structure. Pretty unusual. And this is why Dashur is one of my favorite sites, if not my favorite site in Egypt, because it's the most unsanitized and left in its original condition, particularly the inside of the Red Pyramid. Because yesterday was an extremely busy day at the Giza Plateau, but we've only seen a couple groups of other tourists inside and here in Dashur. And then looking down into the pit, Again, they have dated these logs to the dynastic period, and this is Lebanese cedar. But you can also see that these have been mortared in place. You can see the mortar over there in the corner on the right side that's holding these logs in place. These logs here on the side do not go all the way into the structure. They're fitted into holes, and I've shown those holes in previous videos. And I do not believe they are part of the original construction, nor are they essential in maintaining the stability of the chamber itself. And you can see another one of those cedar logs here in the ceiling. Again, that is not an architectural component in any way that adds stability to the stone. That stuff was all added later. Pretty cool. And man, it sure does look like there's a big hole in the bottom of the floor right there. But stay tuned, guys. Lots more coming up here from the land of Kem in Dashur. All right, in the next couple of images, we're going to take a journey from the primary reaction chamber back through the connecting passage into your upper separation chamber. So I'll show that here in just a moment. All right, so now we're back in the western pump shaft of the bent pyramid this is the opening to the connecting passage leading back towards your upper separation chamber so as we take a journey back through the connecting passage leading toward the upper separation chamber you can see the erosion inside of this connecting passage you can see how smooth and rounded out these edges are here and there is certainly some indications of water erosion here on the floor of this connecting passage so very very unusual but certainly an indication that is compatible with my theory regarding the operation of this structure because there certainly would have been moving liquid through this passage system now as you move through the passage system we get again to this section here that i believe was a portion of natural bedrock a natural tunnel through the bedrock that the builders of this structure incorporated into the passage chamber system couple more images as we get closer to the upper separation chamber and again you can very clearly see what indicates or looks to be an indication of water erosion inside of this passage system and then you pop out of that connecting passage looking down into your separation chamber so very very cool picture and again hopefully you now have some orientation inside of this structure so you can understand the configuration and it will give you some insight into exactly how this structure operated which we are going to cover now all right ladies and gentlemen now that we have completed our exploration of the bent pyramid of dashur let's now jump into an explanation of the chemical manufacturing sequence that has brought us up to this point and then i will briefly review exactly how the bent pyramid operated and which chemical it was producing so the first step in the chemical manufacturing sequence of the egyptian pyramids starts with the step pyramid of saqqara my hypothesis is that the step pyramid of saqqara was utilized to produce methane gas one of the questions that always comes up is what was the methane gas used for well i believe that there would have been two essential applications for that methane gas 
The first being for regular practical domestic applications, heating, lighting, cooking food, boiling water, etc. All very practical domestic applications for the methane gas. The second application being for the production of metal. Metallurgy was absolutely critical to these ancient civilizations, and if they had access to a high temperature gas flame, they certainly would have been using that for metallurgical applications. So those are the two applications for your methane gas, other than for the production of other chemicals. So step number one is to produce methane gas inside the step pyramid. That methane gas is transported through an underground shaft system to Dashur, and it is introduced into the Red Pyramid. Now, inside the Red Pyramid, that methane gas is then transformed into an aqueous ammonia solution. So the next question that comes up is, what was the ammonia used for? Well, the number one application for ammonia is fertilizer. This was a massive agricultural and industrial civilization, and they certainly would have utilized fertilizer to sustain the massive amount of food products that we, they would have needed for this civilization. So again, the application for the ammonia is going to be for fertilizer. However, having ammonia in an aqueous solution is not the most advantageous form of that chemical. You would certainly want it to be in a solid form to facilitate the long distance transportation, storage, and application of this chemical. And that is exactly what we have today in our modern process for the industrial manufacture of ammonia. There are byproducts that are produced in the manufacture of ammonia, specifically carbon dioxide gas, and those byproducts are transferred to a secondary facility that is located in close proximity to your ammonia facility for the production of a high nitrogen content solid compound, which today is urea, which in the ancient past would have been ammonium bicarbonate. And that is exactly what we find with the red and bent pyramids of Dashur. So if the red pyramid is your ammonia manufacturing facility, it would certainly make a lot of sense that you have your solid compound manufacturing facility located in close proximity. And that is exactly what we find in the bent pyramid of Dashur. So again, step pyramid is making methane gas. The red pyramid is converting that methane gas into an ammonia solution. The ammonia solution is transferred into the bent pyramid and the bent pyramid is transforming that aqueous ammonia solution into a more practical solid compound, which was ammonium bicarbonate. Now, how did the bent pyramid make ammonium bicarbonate? Let's jump into that now. So the first step in the process is going to be to close stone valve number one. Now keep in mind in regard to the configuration of this chamber that these wooden beams in this platform were not an original part of this chamber. Those came around later and originally we were dealing with an empty chamber. So here in the southwest corner, there is another unexcavated shaft system. And I do believe that this was the inlet utilized to deliver that aqueous ammonia solution into this chamber. So just envision this chamber being filled with an aqueous ammonia solution. The carbon dioxide that was harvested from the red pyramid is then percolated up through this ammonia solution. Now, this process is going to produce a reaction between your carbon dioxide and ammonia that produces solid ammonium bicarbonate. Now, ammonium bicarbonate is a water-soluble solid compound, and it will continue to dissolve into solution until the reaction reaches the point of saturation, at which point your solid ammonium bicarbonate will begin to precipitate out of the solution. So what do you have to do at that point? You have to separate out all of the constituent components of this solution, and that is exactly the function of your lower separation chamber. So the next step in the process is going to be to open stone valve number one, your aqueous ammonia solution containing your dissolved carbon dioxide and dissolved ammonium bicarbonate will then flow from your primary reaction chamber through this connecting western shaft, through the connecting passage, and that aqueous solution will then be deposited here into your lower separation chamber. Now, what is the function of these lower separation chambers? Well, it is to do just that, which is separate the constituent components of that aqueous solution. So your product and the more dense portion of that solution contain, containing your dissolved solids will settle here in the lower separation chamber. 
Now that slurry containing your dissolved and precipitated ammonium bicarbonate can then be extracted from the pyramid through another unexcavated shaft here that leads out of the bottom of your lower separation chamber. Your dissolved carbon dioxide gas will also be separated from that solution. The carbon dioxide gas will rise here into the upper vault of your upper separation chamber. So that is the function of these two chambers. Again, to separate out your solid product component and your gaseous byproduct that was then recirculated back to the primary reaction chamber to be utilized in the subsequent production cycle. So again, just a quick recap, we are making methane gas inside the step pyramid of Saqqara. We are transforming that methane gas into an ammonia solution inside of the red pyramid and here inside the bent pyramid of Dashur, we are transforming that ammonia solution into solid ammonium bicarbonate, a high nitrogen content fertilizer that can easily be transported, stored, and applied to crops. So ladies and gentlemen, that is an overview of the chemical manufacturing sequence that has got us up to this point. And in the next episode, we are going to be proceeding to discuss the pyramids of Giza. And here's a great picture of yours truly having completed my exploration of the Bent Pyramid during my 2021 research expedition. Our next stop was the Red Pyramid that you see here rising out from underneath the ground in the distance. So another interesting thing about this picture, way far in the distance here, this is at Saqqara. So there is indeed a visual connection between these structures on the landscape. But the more interesting connection becomes apparent when you start to evaluate the potential of these structures for the production of chemicals on an industrial scale. And just a quick reminder to definitely check out my most recent interview on the How to Kill a Sacred Cow podcast. Jay, thank you so much for having me on the show. I had an awesome time, brother. I will leave a link in the video description below. And for anyone that's interested in helping to support the channel, limited first edition print copies of The Land of Chem book are now available at thelandofchem.com. So for anyone that's curious, what exactly is The Land of Chem? Well, the full title for the book is The Land of Chem, an initiation into ancient chemistry through the degrees of the Egyptian pyramids. And this is a fictional story about a young man's initiation into an ancient society that was responsible for the construction and operation of the Egyptian pyramids. And in this story, a query, travels from Ireland to Egypt to receive the degrees of the Egyptian pyramids. And during each degree, he is presented with a thorough explanation for exactly how each structure operates. So for example, the first degree in the story covers the step pyramid of Saqqara. He then travels to Dashur to receive the second and third degrees covering the red and bent pyramids, then traveling to Giza to receive the final degrees of the Egyptian pyramids, and at the end of the story, the young protagonist returns to Ireland and applies the knowledge that he has received during the degrees of the Egyptian pyramids to rediscovering the lost purpose of the ancient passage chamber structures of Ireland. So it's a very, very interesting story. And the narrative of the book is simply a vehicle for me to transmit the theory, which is that the Egyptian pyramids were designed to produce chemicals on an industrial scale. So I really, really appreciate the support. Again, the website is www.thelandofchem.com if you wanna pick up a copy of the book. I'll also have some awesome t-shirts available. It really means a lot to me, so I appreciate all the support in advance. Thank you guys so much. And everyone, that is today's event, Land of Chem 2021 Research Expedition Recap, Part 4, covering the Bent Pyramid of Dashur. I really appreciate everyone's support here on the channel. Thank you so much to all of the new subscribers. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube. If you like the video, definitely leave it a like. Of course, my website is thelandofchem.com. You can also follow me on Instagram at thelandofchem. So in the next episode, we are going to be continuing with the 2021 Research Expedition Recap, and we're going to be taking a journey to the Giza Plateau. We were so fortunate this year to be able to visit the Giza Plateau for the 2021 Fall equinox it was an absolutely amazing day and i can't wait to present all of my exclusive research from that expedition i'm also going to be presenting a thorough explanation for exactly how the great pyramid operated so stay tuned it's going to be a really exciting episode i think that's it for today's video so we will see you next time <laughs>